few announcements this morning. And it's good to be back with you too. It's nice to see familiar faces again. So I'll not be here next week, but I'm here for the harvest, isn't that right? Three, Friday and Sunday. So I look forward to that too. So this morning we're going to serve, we're going to celebrate Holy Communion. So you're all welcome to this service of Holy Communion. And it says you can just receive bread during communion if you'd rather not receive the wine from the common cup. Sunday, the 24th of September, 11 a.m. morning service, preacher Harry Anderson. Touch powerhouse on every Sunday during church, including today. Boy, I missed that. New volunteers welcomed for Tots Powerhouse. GFS and CLB, Monday the 18th of September, 6.45 p.m. to 8 p.m. New members welcome. And this is something I know you'll all be eagerly looking forward to, especially the senior citizens. New Jive dance classes. Church Hall on Tuesdays, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Would I be welcome at that, Lorna, do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Choir practice, Wednesday, the 20th of September at 8.15 p.m. And I wish to highlight this announcement, Sunday school. We aim to start Sunday school from Sunday, the 8th of October. If you are willing to lead or help, please put your contact details on the sign-up sheet in the church porch. So looking for <clears throat> helpers for the Sunday school and again please do your best if you're free to help out in the Sunday school and as I read there the contact details are in the church porch. Church cleaning, volunteers for church cleaning for October appreciated. Rota on display on porch notice board. Tea and coffee after the service. And we hope again you'll all stay and have a cuppa. We hope uh, it says that you will continue in fellowship with us over a cuppa. Yes, yeah, very important fellowship and getting to know each other and encouraging one another. And it's good to do it over tea and coffee. So that's after the service. So we're going to open uh, our service this morning by singing hymn number 26 from Thanks and Praise. That's a new book. I've never, I've just come across it once. Thanks and Praise. And the name of the hymn is Come, Lord, and meet us in this holy hour. Come, Lord, and greet us. Come to us in power.
Let us pray. We say together the colic for purity, and this is a prayer for, to help us prepare to come, to prepare ourselves to come to the Lord's table. Remember, the Lord is the host. He's present with us, and he has invited us to do this in remembrance of him. So we really want to focus on him, and we want to get rid of any blockages, unconfessed sin, or anything like that in our lives. So we say together this lovely calling for purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to intercede for us in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let us affirm our trust in God's mercy and confess that we need forgiveness. And we'll spend a moment or two in silent prayer for, again, a short time uh, for self-examination. Paul, writing in our epistle this morning, said, everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. So we need to examine our relationship with God. Are we in regular uh, prayer or study of his word? And our relationship with our neighbors or our fellow members of the congregation do we hold any unforgiveness or any wrong attitude towards anyone? So in the moment or two of silence, let us ask the Holy Spirit to search our hearts and show us any unconfessed sin or wrong attitudes there may be in our lives. Lord, we ask you to forgive us and just cleanse us with your precious blood. Father, you come to meet us when we return to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you died on the cross for our sins. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you give us life and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And the collect for the 15th Sunday after Trinity. God, who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love, Grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel, that all was abiding in you, they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our epistle will be read for us now by Valerie.
1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 28. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. (laughs) We'll stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Hear the Gospel of our Saviour Christ. According to St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, beginning at verse 26. While they were eating, they were at the Last Supper, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll sing hymn number 433. My God, your table here is spread, your cup with love still overflows.
Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for everyone gathered here this morning. We ask you to move amongst us now in the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to take my lips and speak your word through them and open all our ears to hear your word and soften our hearts to respond to it. We ask you this in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, as we celebrate Holy Communion, I think it'd be good if we thought about the service, you know, what happens in the service, what is the purpose of the service, and so on. It's a service that we should uh, approach reverently, and, uh, you know, we should treat it with great respect. The prayer book gives the service the title, The Celebration of the Holy Communion, also called the Lord's Supper or the Eucharist. Three names there, and each name, you know, brings out a different dimension to the service. The Lord's Supper, it uh, commemorates the Passover meal that Jesus ate with the disciples. He initiated this service. The Eucharist, Greek word for thanksgiving, because in the service we thank God for Christ's work for each one of us. It is holy communion, because through it we commune with God and with other members of the congregation. And it's important that we think about the other, how we do commune with the other members of the congregation and so on. It's a holy service, and as I said, we need to treat it reverently and with great respect. Nothing annoys me more. I've been to, I just love the communion service. I think it's a, a service that we should celebrate every time we meet. And when we were in the Middle East, that's exactly what we did. Every service was a communion service. Because it's just, it's so, so important. that It's like a drama. We act out all that Jesus uh, has done for us and, uh, uh, and so on. But I've been to so many services where the celebrant rattles through the service like a like a, an express train. And you just don't have time even to think of the words or even to concentrate on our Lord and, you know, all the things that he has done for us and, and so on. So as we enter into this service, as we participate in it, as we eat and drink, we should quietly reflect as we recall Christ's death and his promise that he will come again. These are things we should really reflect on. I don't know, for me, the whole service is just focused and centers on Jesus. And he's the host. He invites each of us to do this in remembrance of him. And in the service, I don't know about you, but I really participate with Jesus in a, in a special way. He's here. He's with us. Now, this service was initiated by Jesus himself. You can read the, the account of the, the initiation in the three Gospels, in Matthew, which was read for us this morning, in Mark's Gospel and Luke's Gospel, and in the epistle in Paul's letter to the Corinthian church. But why did the early church celebrate the Lord's Supper? Was it an idea 
that they uh, picked up from the various trade guilds or societies around them because they were all fellowships and they all met for fellowship and had regular dinners or meals together. No. The reason is because the Lord Jesus commanded it. The Lord Jesus commanded us to do this in remembrance of him. It's his command. Paul said in her epistle, he says, I pass on to you what I have received from the Lord himself. Jesus told us to have a meal together. And we read in the Acts of the Apostles about the early church, day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they partook of a food with glad and generous hearts. Because the Lord commanded it. It was his command. Always remember that. And the words which we read, or Valerie read for us in the epistle this morning, are the first known words of Jesus that were written down by anyone. Those words in that epistle, in Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Paul wrote that letter to the Corinthian Christians oh, before Mark wrote his gospel. Long before Matthew or Luke wrote their gospels. And in that letter to the Corinthians, we have the very first account of the Lord's Supper ever written down. So where did Paul get it from? Paul wasn't present at the Last Supper. Well, Paul tells us that he got it direct from the Lord himself. The Lord told Paul what he did and the night he was betrayed. So we have in this epistle a direct revelation from Jesus himself about the Lord's Supper. And when each of us takes the bread and the wine, we are remembering Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. And that's so important to remember that it's something in our daily prayers we should give thanks to God for. Because on that cross, God demonstrated his love for us through Jesus. Jesus died on that cross in your place and my place. Jesus on that cross took upon himself all your sins and my sins. But he suffered terribly before the cross. Do you remember they made a crown of thorns and they put it on his head and they beat the thorns into his head. And we read that they beat him and the or smacked him across the face with their fist and they pulled out his beard. I mean, he was beyond recognition. The things had done to him and the blood must have flowed from his head and his face. And then they took him and then they, they whipped him. They lashed him. The flesh of his back. And then, of course, he was nailed to the cross. He was nailed to his hands and to his feet. And then he was hung up on the cross, completely naked. Think of the, hum think of the way he, he was humiliated by all of that. But he must have been in excruciating pain. And he went through all this, the shedding of, the suffering and the shedding of his blood, because he loves you. He loves me. 
But we know that they took him, they laid him in a tomb, and they went, he wasn't there, he was risen. He had defeated death, death was defeated. And he offers all who repent of their sins and turn to him new life. They can be truly born again, receive that new birth that only he can give. The bread and wine that each of, each of us will take are tangible, visible reminders of Jesus' love for each one of us. Rather than simply say, remember, Jesus give us a reminder. Just as we depend on food and drink, to live physically, we can only live spiritually through Jesus Christ. And we live through him by building up a relationship with him when we receive the forgiveness of sins. We can enter into that personal relationship with God the Father through Jesus. But we have to build in that relationship through regular prayer, through a regular prayer life through regular Bible study, because it's through the Bible we get to know God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And we get to know all about the communion service as well. Communion is a time, as I said, of just that communion, 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 it is a chance to bring ourselves before the Lord and partake in the life that he has given us through his death and his resurrection, that new life, that being born again life, that life that where we enter into a personal relationship with God through him. And when we participate in the Lord's Supper together as members of the congregation, we should be given a clear sign of our unity with one another. Where brothers and sisters dwell in unity, that's where God commands the blessing. And Paul says, and we repeat it in the service, because there is one bread we are many, are one body. We should have great love and respect for each other. We should be encouraged in helping one another. We should be forgiving one another. We should be encouraging and affirming one another. We should be lifting each other up. The Bible says, when that happens, God commands a blessing. He'll bless you individually. He'll bless your family. He'll bless the family of the church, and the church will grow in their love for God and their love for each other. And as they reach out into the community, new members will be brought in. Unity is so, so important. Again, just repeat what Paul says, and we'll repeat it in the service later, because there's one bread, we who are many are one body, for we will all partake in the one bread. So when we participate in the Lord's Supper, we come into Jesus' presence. As I said, he's the host. He has invited us here. He has invited us to do this in remembrance of him. And we remember that he died for each of us. We participate in all the benefits of his death. We receive spiritual nourishment. We, are, we should be united with all other believers who participate in this supper. And that should be a great cause for thanksgiving and joy that can only really be found in the supper of the Lord. When we participate in the Lord's Supper, we are reminded again and again that Jesus affirms his love 
for each one of us. Indeed, the fact that Jesus invites each one of us to come is a vivid reminder and visual, visual reassurance that Jesus loves each of us as individuals. He loves each of us personally. What a reassurance of Jesus' personal love for each one of us. Jesus also affirms that all the blessings of salvation are reserved for all who trust and all who trust in him. In the supper, we are actually eating and drinking at a foretaste of the great banquet table of the king in heaven. In, uh, in our gospel reading, Jesus said, I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. That's the marriage supper of the Lamb he's talking about. That's, that is for all believers, all who die in Christ. They will go to be with Christ. Well, their spirits will go immediately, but later they will receive a new body. When Christ returns, there'll be this great meeting in the sky. There'll be a sound of a trumpet. And the dead who died in Christ will return with him. All believers on earth will be caught up into heaven. And there'll be a great meeting in heaven because it'll be the only place where the Everybody will be able to get together. No stadium on earth could possibly cater for everybody. But it's then when we meet with the risen Jesus, we'll receive our new bodies, our resurrection bodies, our spirit and bodies will be reunited with that whole new resurrection body just like Jesus. And we will be with him forever. And we will be able to celebrate the marriage supper of the Lamb. The Lord will welcome all who know and love him at that table, at that feast. He assures us that he will welcome each one of us who trust in him at that marriage supper. He tells us a place has been reserved for all who are in a personal relationship with him now. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this Holy Communion service. Lord, we ask it to become real to each one of us here this morning during the time of the breaking of the bread. And Lord, as we take that piece of bread in our hands, enable us just to reflect on the pain it cost you eh, when you died for us, when your body was broken and bruised for us. And as we drink from the cup, the wine remind us of that precious blood that you shed for each one of us, and Lord, give to each of us here that new life that only you could give. Give us that assurance that, Lord, when we depart this earth, we will go to be with you. And we thank you that you have reserved a place at that table at the marriage supper of the Lamb for all those who know and love you. So, Lord, assure us that there will be a place for each of us there. We ask it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat> so we'll sing our hymn 447.
The Lord is here. He finds us as we seek to learn his will and follow in his way. 447. We say together the Nicene Creed. We believe. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, for all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit, the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we pray for the church worldwide. 
Grant that every member of your church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified for all people. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That your glory may be proclaimed to our lives. In our prayers, we remember the suffering and the persecuted church. We remember that today and every day, 15 believers will die because of their faith in Christ. Remember that hundreds of thousands of believers are in prison or re-education camps or, or refugees or even living in the jungles. And in so many countries, the vast majority of countries in the world, Christians are denied uh, their basic human rights. So, Lord, we pray for the suffering church. We pray, especially this morning, for the church in northern Nigeria, the church in India, and the church in Pakistan. We pray that you'll give all the believers there a real boldness in the midst of their persecution to be mighty witnesses for you, Lord. Strengthen them in their belief and trust in you. But Lord, we ask you to raise up even stronger churches, as you did in the New Testament as a result of persecution. Raise up uh, spirit-filled, Bible-believing churches in these lands. We pray too for different agencies who support the suffering church. We remember Barnabas Aid, Release International, Open Doors, and others, Lord. But we pray for ourselves, Lord. Give us your heart for our suffering brothers and sisters. And give us generous hearts, Lord, not only to spend time in intercessory prayer for them, but to give generously to support these relief organizations. A moment or two of silence when you pray for the suffering church yourself, maybe in another country you know about. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And we pray for this parish. We pray for every man, woman, boy and girl who claims to belong to this parish. We ask you, Lord, just to visit each household. Give people a real desire to know you. Give them a real desire to want to worship you on on the, the Lord's day that the many will make a real effort to come out and uh, join in worship in this building, worship and praising you and getting to know you through the preaching and teaching of your word. But we pray specifically this morning uh, for a new rector. And Lord, during the, this vacancy here, we ask you to guard and grow this parish as the people serve you together. Give the people a great unity, Lord. Especially in this period without a rector. And Lord Jesus, we know that you have plans for this parish. And that they, these plans are good. We ask now that you will help each person 
each member of the parish, and especially those who attend regularly, to share responsibility. That they'll grow in faith, that they'll love one another, that they'll care for those in need, and they'll reach out to others and welcome newcomers. And Holy Spirit, we pray for your guidance for the four nominators from this parish who will be out seeking the right person to lead this parish. And for those in the diocese, or, or for those uh, out there who are seeking the right place for their ministry. That together, Lord, they may discover your way for the future and see your kingdom grow here through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray for those known to us in need of your touch. And in this silence, we bring to your throne, Lord, those who are passing through illness in hospital those in nursing homes, those at home maybe suffering from depression or another illness. So in the silence, just lift up those known to you at this time. Stretch out your hand. Stretch out your hand to bring healing to those who are sick. Comfort to those who mourn and hope to those in despair. And accept our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we say this beautiful prayer Again, it's a prayer for preparation for coming to the Lord's table, the prayer of humble access. We say it together. Let's say it slowly and thoughtfully. We do not presume. We do not presume to come to this year table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name to share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And we'll sing hymn 404, beautiful hymn, lovely words, lovely hymn of preparation for coming to the Lord's table again. Broken for me, broken for you, the body of Jesus, broken for you.
Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us pray. Father, Lord of cre all creation, we praise you for your goodness and your love. When we turned away, you didn't reject us. You came to meet us in your Son, welcomed us as your children, and prepared a table where we might feast with you in Christ. You shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, on the night before you died, you came to table with your friends. Taking bread, you give thanks, broke it, and give it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, he took the cup of wine, Give thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, giver of life, come upon each of us now. May this bread and wine be to us a remembrance of the body and blood of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Blessed Trinity, with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of thanks and praise and lift our voice to join the song of heaven, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, the earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Thanks be to you, our God, for your gift beyond words. Amen. 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 The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Remember that he died for you, and feed in him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love. Give us grace and open the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us. So we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. In the power of your Spirit, live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Our offertory hymn, number 443. Send forth by God's blessing our true faith confessing. The people of God from his table take leave.
the peace, may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.